I began my way into this movie was through a performance that I did. Um, and I think that it was a, a very free way to begin brainstorming. And I did always think it would become a movie, although I thought it would be a much more kind of experimental movie. I thought, well, I already made a like normal movie. This one will be really weird. And um, although by the time I was done with the performance, I was like, I'd kind of gotten the, the weird out of my system. And I was like, actually, I just want to make a second movie. And if I can put all these sort of surreal elements in it and really make it work narratively, that would be an achievement, yeah. Okay. Was there like a sequence that came to you first or did you kind of have the movie planned out in your head from start to finish? Um, no, yeah, it's always a lot of gathering ideas over a long time. The first, I think the very first thing was, was wanting to do a, a like breakup scene or a scene where someone realizes the other person's about to tell them something that's going to change everything. Wanting to do that well, you know, and in a way that I hadn't seen and was more than just like the horror on someone's face. And that's, so the idea of like that Jason could stop time in that moment was like, the, was the beginning of yeah, the movie. Cool. And uh, how much of you is in the character of Sophie? Um, I mean, I always say that the characters I play are not actually me, but the whole movie itself is very me. Like, yeah. if you could somehow put all the characters together and everything that happens, that's very much like who I am through and through. But she's, uh, you know, I, I put all these very embarrassing, uncomfortable sides to myself in her. So she's, she's. When I look at her, I'm like, oh, what a, you know, what an awkward, problematic person, and I. I don't see myself that way, um, uh, although it wasn't hard at all. Yeah, she's a good dancer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so with the cast, too, I know that you went through like, a casting director, but also through Penny Saver? Right. I, I, didn't, I wasn't actually actively looking for people for my movie, but I was interviewing people who were selling things through the Penny Saver classifieds actually as like a way to get away from my movie. I was taking a break from it and I met all these really interesting people and then one of them just seemed like he stepped out of my movie, you know, and I, I this old man, um, 82 year old man, and so I asked him if he would be in it and just play himself and also the voice of the moon. And and yeah, so I just I put him in, it's, it's almost like a little piece of documentary in a fiction, although I think no one knows, you know? I think he just, he just seems like another character I wrote, although he's really not. Okay, so being that they aren't kind of the Hollywood stereotypes, how is the dynamic of working with just like regular people? Um, uh, well, it's just him. I mean, I had to work in a different way. He's the only one who's improvising. Up, uh, so I would, you know, for example, I'd hand him a hair dryer and say like, okay, now sell this to Jason. And, you know, and then he would just do it, and he's just really great in how he would go about things. And then occasionally I would need him to say a certain line. And to be honest, that was like pulling teeth. I mean, <laughs> he, he was like, there was something in him that was just absolutely like incapable of saying the line. Even if I said it right before, it was like he would just veer off and start talking about something else. Um, which was okay. In a way, the lines changed and got better because of that. Yeah. Okay, and he, I was reading, passed away the day after filming, was that? Not filming. We didn't kill oh, him. Um, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> that sounds horrible. He, he um, yeah, he was very old, and uh, yeah. a bunch of months later, after we finished the movie. Okay. Yeah, oh, the production of the, the Editing and all, yeah, yeah, once the movie was all done. Was that kind of like an odd, ex not, I don't want to say humbling, but just kind of given the, the theme of the movie and just kind of the future and you know, right. doing everything you can. How did you feel about that? Yeah, it really was, um, I mean, I think more and more anyways as I get older, you know, you begin to get more perspective about your work and realize like, oh, real life is always going to win. It's always bigger. It's always feels like more. And that was a case of like, yeah, I didn't think anything could be bigger than like, I finished my movie. And 
and yeah, in that moment, it was just like, ah, oh, right, this, this is what real life feels like, and I, nothing I make is ever gonna be like this. Um, and he, I mean, we should all be so lucky as to like, I mean, he, as to be in a movie, right? I mean, not just that, but he was like working and, you know, fixing his house and just very active yeah. until the, until the very end. And, yeah. um, and, and really saw it coming. I mean, he was, he prepared a lot for it, for dying. Yeah. yeah. Not to sound like cliche, but do you have any future plans or right. any, any goals? You're not the first. <laughs> I am <don't> sure. Worry. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I just um, finished a book that comes out in the fall that, that actually is a, um, all the interviews I did with all the uh, people selling things through the Penny Saver and, and kind of about that time in my life and that process. And um, then I'm also working on a novel, so okay. a lot of writing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> is there any medium that you find kind of easier to, to deal with like as a writer or a director or actor? Um, it's funny, I don't, this isn't a big part of my life, but um, right now, or, but being on stage, uh, I actually really like to improvise. Like, I'm, I'm such a scripted, planned out person, but uh, truth be told, like, to be up there with very little um, of a prompt um, feels so, like, fluid, and um, I'm not a, I'm not afraid doing that. In fact, I, f I feel like more comfortable than I usually do in, in life. And so um, I often have on my like future to-do list, like remember, you gotta get back on stage, you know, because there's, I mean, not, uh, for me that is um, <clears throat> a small stage. It's not, it's not like getting right. back onto Broadway or something. Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah, but that's, that's, there's like a certain joy in that that's not, that you can't get anywhere else. Okay, and <clears throat> sitting here, the movie's complete, it's amazing, you know, it's, it's done very well. Um, what makes you happy or hopeful just right now? Right, um, well, new ideas <laughs> are kind of somehow, you know, my sense of self is so entirely tied up in making things that like, Nothing beats a new idea. <laughs> um, uh, just um, time to hang out and do nothing looks really good now. Not that I ever am good at that when it actually happens, but um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's good in small doses. So, like for example, today I know I have like a few hours, and I'm gonna go get my shoes repaired, and that's I don't know why that's like making me really happy. 